For the past year and a half, our world was altered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Due to SARS-CoV-2's high infection rate, scientists around the world are observing the mechanisms of the virus and the treatments for it. SARS-CoV-2 is part of the coronavirus family, which includes the common cold and the original SARS virus. When COVID-19 enters the human body, it primarily affects the cells of the respiratory tract. Specifically, the virus infects the cells of the lungs and the lower respiratory tract. If you have seen the outer appearances of SARS-CoV-2, you probably have noticed its intricate coat. Surrounding the virus's membrane are the spike proteins, which help the pathogen enter a cell. The spike proteins of SARS-CoV-2 are flexible, which enables the virus to efficiently search for the ACE2 receptor. The virus depends on the ACE2 receptor, since it is how SARS-CoV-2 enters the host cell. Mutations in the new variants of COVID tend to take place in the spike proteins, and these mutations help the virus bind to the ACE2 receptors. Upon binding to the receptor, a molecule cuts the spike protein, which exposes some parts of the virus's membrane. This exposure leads to the virus fusing with the host cell cellular membrane. Then, through a process called endocytosis, the virus enters the cell. SARS-CoV-2 has an RNA genetic code, unlike most organisms which have a DNA genetic code. When the virus's RNA enters a cell, it goes to a ribosome. Ribosomes are responsible for translating an RNA sequence into proteins. One of the first proteins that are produced from COVID's RNA is called RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is responsible for the replication of RNA. In order to produce new viral particles, RNA must be produced. Another protein that is produced during RNA translation is called NSP1. This protein is responsible for stopping any non-viral RNA from being translated. In a healthy cell, our DNA is converted into RNA, which is then translated into proteins that are involved in our body's processes. As a result, by preventing non-viral RNA from being translated into proteins, the infected cell cannot partake in many cellular activities. Another function of the NSP1 protein is to prevent the cell from releasing chemical signals for an immune response. While reproducing itself in the host cell, the virus takes advantage of all the host supplies. For instance, it converts the endoplasmic reticulum, an organelle of cell, into a place where the virus particles can develop. Furthermore, in order to get the most of the cell's resources, the virus forms a syncytium. A syncytium is a group of cells fused together. By creating a syncytium, viruses are able to survive for long periods of time in the host body. After developing a protein called furin, cuts a part of the spike protein, and this cut facilitates the infection of another cell. The new viral particles exit the cell via the lysosome. In healthy circumstances, the lysosome is known as the cell's garbage disposal. In order to function properly, the lysosome requires an acidic environment. Because lysosomes can break down foreign or waste molecules, the immune system depends on it. However, SARS-CoV-2 takes advantage of the lysosome by creating a basic environment for the organelle, thus preventing it from performing its normal functions. The lysosome delivers the new viral particles to the cell membrane, where it then leaves the cell. Studying how COVID infects a cell is important because it can help improve our understanding of how the virus works. Luckily, since the pandemic started in early 2020, the scientific community has come a long way in studying the virus that is on everybody's minds. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.